This form an analysis. October eighth, two Hey, Carl, how you doing? I'm doing good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. October 8th. No, nope, this is the 8th here. How's everything going, Carl? Um, it's going good. Can you hear me all right? I can yes, hear. Yes, I can. I can hear I can. you well. Okay. Yeah, I can hear you. Good. I'm going to give it about another two minutes, then I'm going to start talking about the class. Okay. Okay. I'm hoping that somebody else will show up. All right, well, I'm just going to start the class 
and uh, hopefully someone else will show up so I could pin my video. Um, gallery view, speaker view, line, line. That's what I was looking for. Uh, all right, I'm going to share a screen. Um, this is the Mozart Rondo. Um, that was the assignment last time. And you're going to have to give me a minute here because I'm going to have to log into Valley to get the music. Oh, maybe, maybe not. Let's see. Modules. Uh, yeah, I guess I'm going to have to, but uh, sorry about this, Carl. It's still just you and me. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, it's on YouTube where I put it. Um, Which account form analysis? Channel. what I was looking for, but I'm, I'm there. Um, all right. Uh, I'm sorry, Carl, this is my fault. Okay, uh, 545, 545-3rd. All right, so um, we're looking at the uh, we're looking at really what I did um, in this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna play this right here for you. Give me a chance, and I'm gonna switch views so we can watch the screen as it scrolls through the music. So, new share. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so you should be able to see music here on the left side. Is that correct? Carl? I see a YouTube screen. Yep, perfect. Um, and, and now you just see the music, right? Right. All right, so we're just going to listen to this right here. This was the, the assignment. Um, so I'm going to hit play. And let me just explain to you before, originally we had this assignment also um, back in chapter two or something like that. And it was actually not these eight measures here, it was the next set of eight measures that was the theme. So, and I, and I said that, that if you've done it before, you already know what the answer is. This is phrase one, measures one, two, three, and four, okay? And it ends on G. This is the key of C major. And it starts here in C, but it kind of looks like it's an A minor here. But there's nothing that really says it's an A minor along here. It ends on a G. That's a half cadence. And then it starts all over right here. It's connected by this anacrusis. Ding, ding, ding. Um, 
and it goes scale degree four, scale degree five, scale degree one. That's the cadence formula. So it's five one and it ends with C. It's in root position. It ends with C in the soprano. So that's a perfect authentic cadence. Okay. This is the theme. Okay. And it will always return just like this. All right. So here we're going to play it. Is it too loud, Carl? No, sir. All right, here we go. The theme. share a new screen here and I'm going to go back to sharing this screen right here. Um, so this is probably pretty small on your screen. So let me see if I can blow it up a little bit. Um, that and like this. All right. Uh, exactly what I didn't want to do. All right. All right. So, so here it is right here. Um, this is, so the assignment says, analyze measures one through eight cadences, show me where the periods are, so on and so forth. Uh, the exact wording is part one, eight measures to the repeat sign on the score, locate and identify the cadences, indicate where the periods are. And if they are two, three or four phrases, and if they are symmetrical or asymmetrical. So here it is measures one through four. Half cadence, five through eight, perfect authentic cadence. That's it. Okay. So here, here, here is my little graph of that right here. It says A and A prime. Basically, that A and A prime means they're parallel. Okay. They're really the same thing. And it's a period. That's all it is. And it's because it measures one through four and measures five through eight, it's a symmetrical period. Right? Right? Right. All right, so then it says, write a sentence typed about the first eight measures based on the given example in the book on page 71, which is the description of the period, which reads, and I write it out here, and I even put in italic the parts you might have to change, all right? So in the book it says, the structural unit is an eight measure non-modulating period comprising of two phrases, four plus four in parallel construction. The cadences are half and perfect authentic cadence. That's what the book says, and that's exactly what this is. I'm going to read it again. This, this structural unit is eight measures long, four plus four, okay? It doesn't modulate. It stays in the key of C. It's non-modulating, okay? Uh, period comprising of two phrases, four plus four in parallel construction. The cadence are half cadence and a perfect authentic cadence. So the answer was exactly what was in the book. All right. Then it goes on to say part two. Listen to the work we just did. It's rondo form and indicate on the score where the principal themes are and where the episodes are. Okay. And where the key themes and episodes are. All right. Now here's the deal. 
Uh, this is probably the easiest 20 minute assignment I've ever assigned. Um, give me a chance here to come up with the right thing. Okay. 134. So if you read the chapter, this whole thing is graphed out in the book on page 134. So I'm going to reshare another screen. New share, Brahms, preview, yeah. So I hope, I, I hope you're seeing, um, are you seeing uh, something that says Brahms variations on theme by Haydn? Yes. Okay, good. I'm going to scroll down to about page 134. So I'm guessing where it is. Here it is right here. Mozart, K445, Rondo form outline. He says the principal theme is eight measures long. The first episode is eight plus four. That's uh, 12 measures total, and that's probably right here is uh, a little uh, part that gets us from the dominant key back to the tonic key. And principal theme, it goes eight measures. It's exact, all right? Then the second episode uh, is 24 measures long. It's C, so this was A, principal theme, B, episode one. A, principal theme, C, episode two, all right, and he mentions that it's three part form. I didn't ask you to come up with that because that wasn't the intent of this. The intent of this really was to graph out a large form in a, in a macro graph as opposed to a micro graph. All right, then we have A, which is the section that comes back and it's eight measures long and then we have a 13 measure coda. All right, so I'm gonna do another screen share here. Um, I'm going back to where I was. So in theory, we should be seeing this page again that I penciled up. Are you seeing that? With my pencil? Yes. Okay, good. So I started making the graph here, okay? But that didn't work out very well. Um, so I made the graph. Um, I made the graph off to the side here all right so um here's what part two said listen to the work rondo form and indicate on the score where the principal themes are uh where the episodes are where the key er areas of the theme and episodes are and all of that is listed out in that graph in the book all right so i just put it all here you can see i've, I've written like right here it says episode 2c Okay, and I write tonic key. This is A. This is the principal theme coming back in. So, but I just listed it all out. A, principal theme. One through eight, tonic key. B, episode one. Uh, nine through 20, dominant key. A, principal theme. Uh, 21 through 28, tonic key. C, uh, I, didn't, I didn't write that, but that's episode two. I should have written episode two right there. Submedian key. And then A, principal theme and coda. It's in the tonic key. So I've basically done that. And I did it all on the score too, but I but it's much easier for you not to piece through the score, but as you're writing things in the score to make a graph. These graphs are so important to you being able to formulate something together without getting lost. All right. Because if I want to see where C is, I already know it's measure 29 through 52, and I can go right to that. Do you understand what I'm saying, Carl? Yes, sir. Cool. All right. Um, so, the last thing it said is write a short paragraph type about the Rondo form. Indicate where the parts are, themes, and episodes, including measure numbers and key areas. Okay. So, this is somewhat of a free-for-all. But the first thing I would say is, uh, you know, Mozart's K4545, Piano Sonata number 16 in C major, the third movement is in five-part rondo form, period. That tells everybody 
what the piece of music is and exactly what the form is, period, all right? Five parts, one, two, three, four, five, okay? As opposed to seven part. So then, so then I would go on to say, because I'm reading this, I would say, the principal theme is eight measures long in the tonic E, it ends on a perfect authentic cadence. Measure, uh, measures one through eight or something like that. Then I would say, the first episode, which is large letter B, I would say B, the first episode is uh, nine through 20, so that's 10, uh, seems to be like 11 measures long, I don't think that's right. Uh, nine, it's it's uh, 12 measures long, I'm sorry. Um, so that is, is 12 measures long, it's in the dominant key, and you can go back and look at the chart, and he actually tells you what the cadence is. The cadence is a perfect authentic cadence. Um, yeah, he's a perfect authentic cadence, and then we have the section that modulates back the last four measures, okay? Uh, you, could, you could even add that in, and then we have four measures of a transition back to the tonic key. So you want to maybe mention it was in the dominant key, and then you have A again, and you can just say it's A, it's the principal theme repeated exact, measures one through 28 in the tonic key. And then measures 29 through 52 is C, episode two. Uh, it's in the sub-median key, and I can look over on that chart, and it ends in a half cadence, all right? Uh, and then, uh, then you can say, and then we have the final appearance of the principal theme in measures 53 through 73, uh, whereas the principal theme is exact from before in the tonic key. This is followed by a coda, and the coda is, and you can just go back to the chart and say, it's 13 measures long. Boom. That's all you really had to write. Okay, do you understand that, Carl? Yes, sir. All right. I want you to know that nobody did the assignment, and, and it was probably the easiest assignment I, I, I've ever made because it's in, the, it's in the book. But even if you didn't have the book, the reappearance of the principal theme is really obvious, and I told you it was going to be obvious. It's going to be exact in the same key and everything. All right? So that's that. So let's see. So I'm not going to talk about the midterm exam until probably Tuesday, maybe even Thursday, partially because I have somebody that's very sick that's been doing assignments. And, uh, but I'm not going to wait forever. Okay. So, so just be aware of that. Um, so I'm going to do a new share here. Mm -mm -mm. Close this, hide this, no, no. window. So this is, um, you see something that says 310 Anthology on the top? Yes. Great. Now it's upside down. Now it's sideways again. Now it's right side up. Um, Okay, so this is re directly in your anthology, okay? This is Brahms' variation on a theme by Haydn. You've probably heard it a couple dozen times. Let me bring up the music. Give me an opportunity to, to do that. Doom. Escape. All right, so um, <clears throat> I'm going to uh, bring up a video, and you've probably heard this like eight dozen times. Um, it's called Variations on a Theme by Haydn. I'm just going to start it playing for a second here for you, Carl. <laughs> OK, 
Okay, could you hear it? Yes. All right, so, um, you heard that before, Carl? I believe so. I believe we can use it a time or two. Yeah, it's, it's probably a pretty famous piece of music. Um, so I, I'm assuming you're seeing the YouTube video with the score on it now, is that correct? Yeah. All right, so, of course it's rewinding now, so now it's all blurry. All right. Um, another name for this piece of music is St. Anthony's Chorale. Okay, we're only going to listen to the first thing. Now, see, we're really on a new chapter. We're now in chapter seven called Theme and Variation. Okay. So, so Brahms wrote this based on a theme by Haydn. Okay, Haydn was long dead when Brahms was ha happening. Uh, and, and Haydn just pulled it out of a chorale book somewhere, probably, because we figured out, you know, later on that it was a chorale, all right? So it's, it's called St. Anthony's Chorale is the chorale that it belongs to. And I'm assuming you understand what a chorale is, correct? Yes, I do. Yeah, so like the hymnals at church, the ones that are in four parts, those are chorales. Chord, 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 chord. Um, but it's based on that. And really, the theme is just based on it. And you can see the theme here. It's in the oboes. It's in the bassoons here. All right. Um, and then it has supporting stuff. All right. But let's just listen to the first part. So it's going to go through, and then it's going to make a repeat. All right. Uh, let me share a new screen so we can say that and then we'll go back to it. Let's see variations on the theme. All right, so here's what we got here. We've got this part goes to right here and then it goes back. All right, so this is the big road mark. All right, then this thing continues on. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad I did this because I got to flip this around. Then this thing continues on all the way to here and then we have a repeat sign that goes back to here. All right, whether or not they're gonna take the repeat, I don't know, but repeats are really important in understanding the form, all right? So, and then it ends right here. That's the, the, the principal theme, you could call it, or the theme. So how many parts are there, Carl? Uh, okay, let me go back and repeat this. We got something that goes to here and then it repeats. Then we got something that starts here, goes to here and then it repeats. How many parts are there? Carl? Yes. How many parts are there? Mm, is it uh, three? Okay, let me just start all over for the third time now, all right? We got, a, we got something that goes from here to here and then it repeats. Then we got something that goes from here to here, then it repeats. How many parts do we have? Oh, so that's two, two parts, my bad. Yeah. So that's like the binary, rounded binary? Well, I, we don't know if it's rounded binary, but it's two part form, so it's binary form. Okay. Yeah. All right, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna actually listen to it uh, looking at this because I think that the other, the other score is uh, more difficult um to deal with so let me see i need to bring up the video i need to escape out of this mode all right and i need to but here we go from the beginning repeat now. All right, so 
I just want to say that is part one. All right, now here we go on to part two. it there let's go back and look at this score um so i've got i've got the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to count the measures carl all right mm -hmm. and and just so you know when i'm actually working out a score i actually put a measure number on every measure so so when it comes to the point where i want to talk about something in this measure i don't want to have to count the measures you understand what i'm saying yeah all right so so with a pencil, I would just go right through and mark all the measures. But anyways, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, there's ten measures. That doesn't work out into our pattern of eight and eight or fours or whatever. But but we could go one, two, three, four and see if there's a cadence there. And then we go five, six, seven, eight, see if there's a cadence there. Maybe this is an extension. But the best thing to do is listen to it for the cadences. Okay? So here we go from the beginning. There's the cadence. All right, so there were two cadences there. One was at the end, and they're both punctuated by some 6-4 moving to uh, 5 chord or 5-6-4-1 or something like that. But anyways, so the first cadence is right here, all right? That's one, two, three, four, five. So it's five measures long, all right? Now, what key are we in? Uh, you, maybe you can't see it very well, so let's just do this for the moment. Uh, now that I did this, I gotta go like this and like this. So it looks like we're in B flat, right? Right. Yeah, so see the clarinets are in B flat, so we write them in the key of C and they will, sound down to B flat. Um, I've got horns in B flat and horns in E flat. Notice they don't have any keys here, all right? Um, this is the traditional way of doing it. You know, horns didn't have valves for a long time. So, um, although the modern horn wasn't, wasn't around, they did have a classical horn. But I, I think that, that, what instrument do you play, tuba? Uh, have, you ever, have you ever played the trumpet or the, or the trumpet before, Carl? Uh, yeah. So the trumpet had valves, all right? right. But the tuba, you have this uh, harmonic series. You could press one valve and play a whole bunch of different notes on it, right? Right. So understand that the horns, he's writing them. The way he's writing, he's writing them for horns without valves, okay? So what they have is they have a, a crook that extends the length. So they have this horn, and they can put these mouthpieces on that, that, that are get longer and longer to extend the range. So the pitch keeps going lower and lower and lower, all right? And so we, we traditionally write them 
in the key of C. So everything's in the key of C, and uh, and it just sounds down. So a horn, a horn in B flat from C to B flat is a whole step or a major second. All right, but E flat, C down to E flat. What's that? It's it's a major sixth. Okay, and so then he would play C and it would sound down to E flat. And that's how that works. Do you understand that, Carl? Yes. Okay. Uh, trumpets are also valveless here. All right, two trumpets in B flat. So he's writing them in C. The note sounds down to B flat. I'm actually not sure if they're valveless, okay? But the horns are, are valveless, all right? The reason I'm not sure if they're valveless is because there's no key signature here, but that would be correct for B flat. We would write things in C, all right? But see here, I would expect a key signature if we were writing things uh, for a valve horn. But anyways, then we have timpani and F and B flat, and typically in this period of music, we only had two timpani, all right? And they were almost always tuned to the tonic and the dominant. All right, violin one, two, three, the viola is in the alto clef, violin, cello, and contrabass. I want you to notice that often, but maybe not always, that the contrabass is doubling the violin cello, okay? So we have, uh, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller now. All right, so, so we have one, two, three, four, five, right? Yes, no, maybe. Yes. I'm, I'm glad you're alive and listening to me. All right, so here we go. I'm just drawing a big long line here and uh, I'm gonna go like that. And, and that looks like about what it is right there, all right? And uh, because I can't go down here and we can't see everything, I'm gonna write the, the uh, the cadences and on this line right here. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. All right. That has to do with we don't have a lot of space. Are you watching this on a telephone? I'm on my uh, my iPad. It's like a tablet. Okay, well, at least you're getting a better view than on a telephone. Okay. All right. Um, so, do um, you see how this goes four, scale degree four and B flat? It, this, is, this is actually scale degree four. This is a chromatic move, E flat, E natural, and then F. Do you see that right there, Carl? Yes, I see that. Okay. So in the key of B flat, what's F? F is the five. Right. This is a half cadence here, all right? So I'm just gonna kind of write, at least I hope I am. Uh, I always have to figure this out. Uh, here it is right here. So let me see. All right. So, so this is, uh, we're in um, B flat and this is five, five, and it's a half cadence. We agree with that, right, Carl? Right. All right. Good, so now, now the other cadence is right here, all right? It's right at the end before the repeat. So I'm gonna blow it up a little bit. Um, might be too far. Uh, I'm gonna minus it one out. And I'm gonna look around. Uh, I, so I'm, I'm gonna look down here, and, and it's a lot easier sometimes to look in the bass section. Um, or the bassoons, I want you to notice that the bassoons are doing something similar here, okay? But basically, okay. we're ending on B flat, right? Mm-hmm. All right, there's B flat right there. And this is F, this is scale degree four, E flat, F, and B flat. So, some sort of authentic cadence. So let's figure out perfect authentic cadence. These chords are in root position, all right? Uh, this is just uh, Do going down to So, which is part of the chord, and back up to Do. All right, so. Um, I'm looking around to see what the highest instrument is. 
and the highest instrument playing is the clarinet. And it goes, uh, here's Scalagri one. It's basically a perfect authentic cadence because this is just an appoggiatura coming off that. All right? You know what I'm saying? It's a non-chord tone. Right. Right. Okay. And and that's backed up by the by uh, this bass moving and then coming back. All right. So uh, let's go text again. Oh, uh, you know, let me see. So this is really just in, still in B flat. B flat. This is uh. You're just gonna write five. Uh, I hate it when it does that. Five one, and it's uh, a P A C. We established that, right? You agree with me? Yes, Carl. Yes. All right. Cool. So now we've established we've got two cadences here. All right. So now. Um, let me move this out of here. So we've established that part one as measures one through five with a half cadence and then uh, six through 10 with a half cadence or a, a perfect authentic cadence. Mm -hmm. So Carl, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm taking a piece of paper right now and I'm kind of making a little chart of this. Okay, so I got okay. part one, and I got measures, first it's in B flat, and I got measures one through five, and it ends on five, and it's a half cadence, all right? Mm-hmm. Um, this is part one, and, and so I'm gonna call that A, lowercase a, and then, um, the second part is, is measure six through 10, and it ends on uh, five, one, and it's a perfect authentic cadence. And because it plays the, the, the same thing as the first thing with the variation in the instrumentation, okay, it's just A prime again, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So if I was to use that, that statement on page 71 that I keep referring back to, it's been in nearly every assignment since week two or three, all right? Uh, yeah. The structural unit is a 10 measure, non-modulating period comprising of two phrases, five plus five in parallel construction, the cadence half and perfect authentic cadence. So the only thing I did to this um, was change the amount of measures. All right, because instead of four plus four, it's five plus five, right? Right. All right, and eight measures, it's 10 measures. That's all I did to this, all right? So let's say I got a, uh, uh, let's see, let me read this for a second here. So when I talk about phrases, phrases, all right. Is a five measure phrase symmetrical or asymmetrical? It's symmetrical. No. It's, no, it's asymmetrical. It's asymmetrical. Symmetrical okay. phrases are twos, fours, and eights. Okay. So twos, fours, and eights. Right. And everything else is asymmetrical. All right. So it's not even numbers because you got six in there and you got 10 and whatever. All right, these are asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. Now, when I talk about the period that this forms, because this is a period, you got phrase one and phrase two. All right, is it right. asymmetrical or symmetrical? Say it again. The period is it asymmetrical or symmetrical? Mm, it is symmetrical. Yes. Why is it symmetrical? Um, because it ha it doesn't have um. Carl, they're the same amount of measures. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. right. Symmetrical phrase. Uh, symmetrical periods 
contain phrases of the same amount of measures. Asymmetrical periods contain uh, phrases with different amounts of measures. So you could have one with three, one with five, and the other with five, and it would still be, if it was a three phrase period, it would still be a, uh, asymmetrical, not symmetrical. But if you had five, five, and five as a three phrase period, that would be symmetrical because they're the same. Right, right. Carmen? Okay, all right. And I'm just, I'm pounding down some of these terms from before, okay? Uh, okay. All right. So now let's look at the second half here. All right. Uh, I'm going to go hit play, I hope. And I think that it's going to start right up there. Uh, probably not. This is the repeat. Here's our half cadence. Part two, listen for the cadence. That sounded like a cadence possibly. Mm -hmm. That was definitely a cadence. And I've heard this before. All right, so um, I'm going back here, and I and 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 we said, or at least I said, and I think you might have agreed, and you might not have agreed, that I got something that goes one, two, three, four, and it lands right here. All right, boom, as a possible cadence. But I definitely have a cadence here, right? Right. All right. You listening to the blues there? All right, so, so whether it's a cadence or not, I'm not completely sure. But let's figure out what the name of this chord might be, all right? Just the name of it. We don't have to figure out the Roman numeral or anything. It's landing right here, all right? So the first thing I'm going to go out and look at the bass note, all right? I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, give you a little bit more lookage. Let me ask you this: Do you see something in the way of the contrabasses? Because mm -hmm. can you see? No. Okay, because on my screen, I keep having to move zoom around the the things that zoom has, so I can see things. So I clearly have a G right there, right? Right. All right, so I got a couple of G's in the basses, and let's just verify that. Uh, I got a G in the contrabass there, but I don't have G's there, so let's let's just see what the, the, the basses are playing. I got a G, I got a B flat, and I got an E flat. So that's E flat, G, and B flat, right? Right. All right, so that looks, to me, at least what the basses are playing, um, that looks like some sort of E flat chord in first inversion, right? Right. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of keep verifying it, all right? Here's a B flat, and here's an E flat, all right, in the elbows. And uh, here's a B flat, and here's an E flat. So I got I got that. What's E flat in the key of um, B flat? Uh, that's the four. Yeah, so this is some sort of four, six chord. I don't really think it's a cadence, but maybe you would. All right? Right. And the reason I really don't think it's a cadence is because the because of the melody. All right? Um, but I, I, will, I will bet that there's a ton of people that's going to say, oh, yeah, that's a plagal cadence. Right. All right? Because it ends on four. And if, you, and if you think it is, then you write it. Okay? I don't got a problem. But it's really weak. It's four, six. Um, but a play, you know, but it, is it four, six to one? Cause that's really what a plagal cadence is. 
You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm 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 actually looking at the music on my sheet of paper here. I guess I could look at it right here. Um I move this out of the way again. I'm just kind of looking over here. D D D D D D D and I know I'm not perfect pitch, Carl, so sorry. D D D D D D D D D D D Maybe the cadence is right here. Not there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. All right, so maybe we looked at the wrong thing. That would be my fault. Let's see. This ends on B flat right here. And mm -hmm. B flat. All right. So, and this is uh uh this is a horn in B flat, so it sounds down the whole step. So uh this E flat E flat sounds down. Let's let's just avoid that for the minute and see what we got up here. It's, sometimes it's a lot easier. To see what we got mm -hmm. in other places. All right. Right. So the oboe is playing right on this downbeat B flat and D. The bassoon is playing B flat and D. The counter bassoon is playing B flat. So the horn, this E, this is uh this is E and it sounds down to D, a whole step down. And this is C, and it sounds down to B flat, right? So pretty right. much we got some sort of uh, one chord here, all right? So this maybe is five. I'm just venturing going to one. So you think you want to call it that? Yeah. All right. This is the highest instrument, and it ends on a D, so it's not a perfect authentic cadence, all right? So let's call it right. that, all right? It's fine with me. Uh, mostly because I was trying to figure out what was going on. So I just went and looked at it myself that I apparently had the wrong measure going. So let's see, we're in B flat still. And yeah. uh, this is um, five to uh, one. And it is a IAC, incomplete authentic cadence. I sometimes just call that an AC, authentic cadence. All right. Mm -hmm. um, but the theory book that you were using last year calls that an IAC. Mm -hmm. The problem with the word, this is between you and me, the problem with the word IAC is that some people, and I learned it like this a long time ago, some people call an IAC an inverted authentic cadence. So something is inverted, you know, uh, so I, you know, incomplete, uh, whatever. If you put IAC or if you put AC, that's fine with me. But you would put PAC when it's a PAC, right? Right. Okay. So we clearly got a cadence there. That's one, two, three, four measures long. So I'm going back to my chart. And I'm going to call that B. So I got something that's four measures long and it's uh, 11, 12, 13, and 14. And I have, it's still in B flat and it's um, uh, five one, it's an IAC, okay? So mm -hmm. so I, I've made, I just keep continuing to make my chart different, all right? Uh, or continue to make my chart as I go. And so now let's go down to, uh, this right here, because let me tell you, Carl, what tipped me off, all right, that I made a mistake, mm -hmm. all right? And these are the things you, well, you know, I clearly have this coming right here, right? So one of the things I didn't do, which we should have done, is count the measures. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then we had right. this one right here. So mm -hmm. I just kind of just screwed it up there when I put it there and calculated the chord, all right? So... Mm -hmm. It, it's it's here. It's clearly here. Five one. Of course, the five is over here, and the one I'm just kind of typing in. All right. So so now we have. Uh, what's interesting, really, is I want to point out the melody. The melody here is just a ramp up. You know what I'm saying? But then the melody over here. Goes down. All right, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm looking right here to see what kind of cadence this is. All right. 
Well, I'm pretty sure we're going to find this isn't working. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I already know right here by looking at this, this is a half cadence. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so I'm just going to write on my chart for a minute here. Uh, 15, 16, 17, 18, 15 through 18 is B prime. It's just going the opposite direction as, as B. And it uh, clearly ends on five, and it's a half cadence, okay? And it's a pretty yeah. strong half cadence, all right? Um, Yeah, so let's uh, let's just drop something in and, and say, uh, please help me. I think we've been putting them right here. Mm -hmm. This is in B flat. This is five. And this is a half cadence. All right. So let me make sure. Yeah, I'm in the right place. All right. So, so now the problem I have is I got a, an authentic cadence followed by a half cadence, okay? Uh, so there's a couple different arguments for this, all right? And this is what I really want to point out to you, Carl. There's a couple different arguments. Uh, is that I have a melody that goes up and then goes down like a big, big arch. Maybe that other cadence mm -hmm. isn't a cadence. But, I, but we both heard the cadence, you know. So some people are going to argue it like that, that this is an eight-measure phrase as opposed to a four-measure phrase that ends on a half cadence, all right? Okay? So okay. maybe that's what it is. Maybe that's what it is. But we have a pretty firm half cadence right here, all right? So I'm just trying to piece them together a little bit, and, and, and that, that's kind of what's going on, all right? So, so again, things don't always fit into the perfect box that theory people make. Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. So they said, they said they progressed from strong to weak. So now my question is, is an incomplete authentic cadence, is that stronger than an, a half cadence? Let me sh let me show you maybe why it's stronger. All right. Let's say we were in the key of F. This would be a very strong cadence. All right. Mm -hmm. So here it is. It's this E natural again. See that E natural? That puts mm -hmm. it in the key of F temporarily. That's just the five of five. So when you have five of five moving to five, it makes it sound very strong. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it sounds like five one in a different key. Mm. But is that he actually never is in a different key. He's just making that chromatic move to intensify. Now it might be five one, five of five to five, or it might be, you know, seven circle or something like that. But it's that chromatic intensification of having that applied chord make it stronger. Okay? That's another way to argue it, and that's the way I would argue it, all right? So, so everything isn't so neat, and you got to make up your mind on it. All right, so after this, we've heard this before. One, two, three, four, five measures, all right? It goes, I uh, guess I haven't been drawing lines here. Um, but let's not worry about that. The, the line is right here, all right? And I'm going to see if I can draw a line now. Yeah, okay. And let me make sure I get it over here a little bit. Uh, back over here. All right, it's right there. So it ends right here and it elides into whatever goes on right here. All right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it ends on boom, that downbeat, which elides directly into the next part. But, anyways, um, this is A prime. Okay? Because it goes. Uh, five, one. See how it has, here's that five and five, one. All right. So this is really just a perfect authentic cadence again. Oh, uh, and B flat. So hang on one second. Boom, boom, text. 
so this is like uh, in, uh, D flat. This is five one, and it's a perfect authentication. And I'll fix that in a second here. All right. All right. So it's kind of like the five back over here. All right. Um, so we could actually do this like this and go like this. Put the five there. And five one. All right. So then, mm -hmm. what, 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 now, so, so that's basically kind of it. What is this right here? So let, let's just take a, I, I'm not going to look at all the notes here, but I'm pretty sure the contrabasses are, are doubling what the, the, the cellos and basses are doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there we go. We got, we got scale degree one, scale degree one, scale degree one, scale degree one. Scale degree one, scale degree one, scale degree one. Lots of scale degree ones, right? All right. So now, if you listen to it really hard, um, are they really playing anything different? Uh, so I have, to, I, I can't see it at all. Uh, it's the most difficult thing for me to. We're just looking at the woodwind section right now because that's the easiest thing to look at. It looks like they're going to play all the chords. So we clearly have, we have a C and we have an A, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so uh, we kind of don't have a five chord maybe, all right? But we really do, all right? Um, and, and I might have this line not quite in the right place, all right? But uh, we're looking for B-flat, D, and F, right? Right. All right, I, I was looking at the wrong key here, uh, wrong clef here. Look at it right here. Here's an F and here's a B-flat, right? Or an F and a, a D. So B-flat, D, and F, we have the bass notes, right? Mm -hmm. Right. All right, so there it is. Now, uh, now we just have a, a bass coming along here, and I'm frankly, when I have a bass note repeating, and maybe I got some other chords, I'm going to look for four. All right, four chord is E flat, G, B flat, right? It's a four six four chord. So, see this very next beat right here? Yeah. Yeah. There, there's there's E flat right there, and there's G. All right. Uh. And then we got something going back here, and this is uh, this is an A, and this is a uh, kind of like an F, right? All right. Mm -hmm. and, then it, and then it just goes back down. All right. So we we we've, we've maybe got something that once in a while goes four six, and then kind of puddles its way back around. But we basically got a big long extension of one. All right. All right. And and here's where you can uh here's where you can see four one pretty good. All right. So that's what that is, a big long extension. So I'm thinking that we have and this is what you have to think, Carl. Come on. Uh, I'm thinking that we have, we have this cadence here. I know I didn't draw anything, so let's try to draw something. I, I didn't get it far enough. I didn't know I could do that. And I have another one right here. All right. So I'm thinking in this part two, I got four phrases. I got one, two, three, four. We had some sort of cadence right there. 
And uh, okay, I didn't go down here. Then we have one, two, three, four. And now we have one, two, three, four, five. So we've got four plus four plus five. All right. And now let me ask you, is it rounded binary form? Um, yes, because we got those. Um, Keep five. talking. You got the return right here. Right. Yeah. All right. So we got the return. All right. So this is this is a prime. All right. So now I'm going to write this in here. So now that I know what I'm, I'm talking about. So it's 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Um, that we have a prime plus we have a cadential extension. So the extension is going to continue on until uh, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. 30, I'm gonna count until 30, or 29, I'm sorry, 29. Extension is 24 through 29, all right? All right. So I got, in, in the second part, I got a four phrase, a four phrase, and a five phrase uh, situation here, all right? So, um, so one of the reasons I don't have a period in in, in the first B, which is 11 through 14, in the second B, which is 15 through 18. Um, give me a second here, Carl. I just did one of my glorious numbers here. Um, it is because, because we have this, uh, this phrase right here that ends in an IAC, and it's clearly tied to this phrase right here, which ends in a half cadence. So you don't really have a period there, all right? But this ties this in with this right here, because it's only, it's only one phrase. So I doubt we have this as a solo phrase because it's coming from before. So what I got is a three phrase period, all right? So if I was putting this into my nice little neat paragraph about page 71 says so the structural unit is a well I got four four eight plus five so that's 13 measures uh, plus a whole bunch of more measures so I don't really I, I'm not gonna count them right now but the structural uh, uh, let's see I can count them uh, 8 19 through 29 10 uh, the structural uh, Structure unit is a 28 measure non modulating period comprising of three phrases, four plus four plus five, uh, which doesn't make sense. Um, so, it, but, it, but it's in contrasting construction, and the cadences are IAC, HC, and PAC. So, I think then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the extension and then. Uh, the final, and I could say the final cadence is, is followed by a, uh, which a lot, there's an elision, but it's one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, the seven measure cadential extension. Okay, let's listen to the second half of this again. It's going to start right, we're already playing this note right here, okay? Here we go. Okay. that cadence. Listen how strong this half cadence is. And then the next one. The natural extension. Kyle, give me a minute. We got a couple minutes left, probably not very many, but I wanna I wanna just listen to the next part, next one. Give me a chance to put these in line here. All right, I really screwed that up. There it is right there, and the next page. He uh, actually has the entire piece printed, which is a whole lot. 
All right. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why that flipped over. So mm. go here. Well, anyways, we're right here at the moment. All right. I want you to notice it's in B flat still, right? Right. All right. So now let's listen to this. And this is not going to be easy to follow. All right. This is variation number one. Here we go. Long note here. And here it is. That was part one. Here's part two. Here's the repeat. So Carl, what we got going there is exactly the same thing. Harmonically, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. Melodically, it's a little bit changed. Structurally, mm -hmm. it's the same thing, all right? Uh, all I right. want you to notice that then he, he changes keys here. So let me ask you this. Uh, what key is five flats? What two keys could it be? Could be the A flat. No, no. Uh, not A flat. Five flat. B, A, D, G. D flat. It could be D flat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or it could be what? Uh, B flat minor. Which one do you think it is? It could be the B flat minor. B flat yeah, minor. It, it's probably just a change of mode. That's right. all. Right. Okay. Um, often, but not always, I'm not going to pin my hole in, but most variations are in the same key. Right. All right. So, so in this case, B flat is B flat is B flat. We're just changing modes, the Ionian mode and the Aeolian mode. So Carl, I got no homework for you. I'm going to build a module, but we are on chapter seven and I'd be reading the chapter. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming and have a great and be safe. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye.